Hey, hey, everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at this rocket manipulation game called Ticket to Mars. In Ticket to Mars, the players are going to have a couple of different secret scoring cards, and then you are going to be playing cards from your hand to manipulate the characters that are loaded onto these different rockets. And you're trying to make specific combinations, have a single character show up on multiple rockets and many times, uh, manipulate how loaded the rockets are. You Maybe you want them fully filled, maybe you want them kind of empty. And at the end of the game, you are going to reveal your three secret scoring cards. You'll have three of them and see how well you did. That's basically all there is to it. So let me show you how it works. We'll come on back after that and I'll tell you what I think of it. So here's everything that comes with the game. At the beginning of the game, everybody is going to pick a color. They are going to put their scoring token on the at the beginning of the score track here. And you get your set of cards. Five cards, everyone's set being identical. This is made up of five uh, of uh, four different actions. And the actions are, these two cards are the same. And they allow you, with uh, the upward arrow there, to load someone onto one of the rockets on the board. You have the opposite of that, which is unload, get off my ship. And so you can take someone off of a rocket. You have this one that allows you to move someone from one rocket to another one. And you have this one, which is going to give you all of your played cards back into your hand, including this one, because they don't come back automatically, as well as further the countdown. You would move the rocket down one space each time one of these cards is played. And the game's gonna be over at the end of the round uh, in which this makes it all the way down here to the zero. All right, so again, everyone has the same cards. The other thing you need to worry about during setup is giving every player one of each of these three different kinds of scoring cards. And the scoring cards tell you uh, what you need to uh, try to have showing on the rockets and how many points you are going to get for that. So we have over here, this kind of card is going to show a specific character and it's going to tell you how many victory points you get for each time that that character shows up on the uh, on the board. And so you've got, they're all worth one except for the dog, which is worth two. I honestly couldn't figure out why that was, but uh, they are the same number over here. And I don't think it affects any of the other cards. But anyway, so every... Um, Every time that character is showing up on, you know, shows up on one of the rockets, every time they show up in general, you get a victory point. We have this one, which is pairs of characters. And every time you have that pair on a rocket, the same rocket showing both, you are going to get some victory points for that. And uh, maybe the reason the dog is like that is because they never show up as part of a pair. That could be it. And then uh, you have over here these cards which show you some sort of um, combination you want to have or some sort of fulfillment you want to have on one of the rockets a filled rocket completely taken over um, you're gonna get three victory points every time that happens if the rocket has a single occupied spot that's worth five victory points each time you do that it's very difficult so two three and then this is more kids than grown-ups and this one is more grown-ups than kids so again, everyone gets one of these. And so, you know, you would shuffle them all up and I would take, uh, let's say this, this, and this, okay? I'll set the, re the rest of these aside for now. And then you are ready to begin the game. And so on your turn, you are going to play a card and then referencing these cards over here, you would load someone onto a rocket like so. Then the next player goes, they might load someone onto a rocket. The next player goes, they might move someone next player goes they'll load someone onto a rocket you know and so on eventually someone's gonna need their cards back or you can just choose to do it even if you haven't spent the rest of your cards so they move this down they get their cards back this continues again until the game is over and at that point you reveal your cards and you score some victory points and so you know if this is the uh the case here let's just populate our board a little bit just to help us out with the scoring uh, let's put him here, this character that is definitely not Buzz Lightyear. Don't call him Buzz. All right, so let's say that's what I've got there. Not very good, but okay. 
And so I would score. So let's take a look at what my scoring here is. I've got, um, every time uh, this character shows up, it's he's there once, twice, that's two victory points. I am yellow, so let me find my scoring token here. Two points for that. This one says, more adults than kids, and I did that here once, so I get four victory points for that. And then this one is, every time I made that combination, that combination is not there at all. If this was here, however, I would have done it there, and I would have gotten three victory points. So, one, two, three, and that's it. Everyone does that. Whoever has the highest score at the end of the game is the winner. Easy peasy, very straightforward. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of this game. All right, so there it is. Let's talk about this. I'm going to start off with thematic ties. I like space themes. I like the retro kind of look of the whole thing. I do have a couple of issues with the theme uh, being that you load, I mean, like the characters that you're supposed to have on multiple rockets are the same person. Like, okay, so this little girl is on multiple rockets at the same time. What kind of dimension is this? But I, I assume she represents multiple little girls. And so the theme is okay. It's, it's, a, it's a fun theme. The idea of loading these people and then telling them to move and then telling them to get off of the rocket, that's cute. And I enjoy it, you know. Uh, the aesthetics are, for the most part, all right. Though I've got some serious issues with some of the iconography that they went with for the scoring cards. And, and it's unclear sometimes. So, for example, they'll show you a character... Okay, you want this character to show up on the rockets, and they show you across the top of the scoring card a, a row of rockets, meaning every rocket. Okay, so no matter what rocket they show up in, you, you'll score. Fine. Then they show you a pair of people, and at the top they show you a single rocket, but can I score that pair per rocket? That's not quite 100% clear. So, you know, I've got uh, some issues with the graphic designs a little bit and the, with, the, with the, you know, with the way they chose to go with that. Also, the tokens for the characters, the little punch-out tokens are very thin and not quite, you know, not something I would call high quality, let's say. Replayability is really low. There is... Uh, there's no reason to come back to it. And by the way, if you hadn't figured it out, this is getting a fairly negative review. It's not, you know, I'm not um, body slamming it or anything, but it's a very negative review. Uh, there's no reason to come back to it. You know, other players are going to mess you over without meaning to because they're just working on their own thing. You are just trying to get some things to happen, but the, the manipulation is so... Everybody else is messing with you just because it happens, not because they have a reason to or because they're even catching on to what you're doing necessarily. It just sort of occurs that the replayability, you play one game now and next game you've learned something from their previous one is untrue. You playing differently at the beginning of the game as you play at the end of the game, that's untrue. So replayability is quite low. Game length is fine. It's actually a little bit faster than I expected it to be. So, you know, thumbs up here. It it does not outstay its welcome, and it does move along at a nice clip. The idea of the rocket moving down every time you play that card, by the way, is also a nice touch. I thought that was good. Ease of play is fine, except for the idea that some of the rules are not clear. Uh, and they really should have, they, they should have delved a little bit more into the rules. This is all the, this is the rule book here. So this is nothing. And then you've got this page over here, which is largely nothing. And these are the rules. And then on the back, they explain a couple of the other scoring cards. But a little more detail. Again, some of the graphical issues. A little more explanation as to how things score. A scoring sample, even. There is... that. I, I, you know, I mean, they could have given us a little bit more in the scoring department that would have still occupied the same amount of space on that sheet and been clear to play. So I have a problem with this a little bit. Again, it's not a big deal uh, as far as sort of you, you'll, you'll figure it out, but that's no excuse. It really should have been laid out very clearly when it comes to a game that has like three rules, you know? Um, so there's that. Lastly, tactics and strategy, luck, things like that. It's very random. It's very lucky. If your cards across the three scoring opportunities line up 
that's good, right? I mean, if the character, if one of the two characters in your pair of characters is the same as the solitaire character you want to load, that's just good because that card, that character scores for two of your cards. If your cards are all opposite of each other, right? So, for example, last game I played, I had a pair of characters, fine. I had the solitaire character, which was not this, and it was a grown up, fine. And then the other card was, I want to have more kids than grown-ups. So that all works against each other. I got the lowest score, for sure. Someone else, the player who did win, their cards dovetailed into each other nicely. So at the end of the day, where you started from, it would seem to me, maybe I'm wrong, but depending on the cards you have at the beginning of the game, really are going to impact how well you do in the game tremendously. So... Tactics and strategy, ah, not so much, you know. Anyway, the main thing that I think I came away with this game, and my players did as well, is that the game does not inspire uh, contempt. It is not a game that's so bad that when I'm done, that when you're done playing, you go, "Oh, think I'm, I'm glad that's over," you know. It's it's inconsequential. It's a game that felt. A little rough around the edges. It's a game that felt boring, certainly. It's a game that felt uh, uninteresting. It brought nothing new to the table. And it's one that just did not even inspire... It, it inspired no strong emotions, good or bad, you know? I'd rather take a game that is not to my liking and inspires me to go, man, this is really not for me, than a game that's clearly just sort of there. It just exists, you know? And that's sort of how I feel about this one. So Ticket to Mars for me is a, a pass. And again, I'm not even, it doesn't even inspire uh, anger or anything even remotely close to that. It's just a game that is, uh, there's no good reason for it to, to exist, you know. So don't waste your time with this one. Uh, pass on it if you see it somewhere and go get yourself a much better game. There are tons of those out there. So there you go. That is Ticket to Mars. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.